Hey everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we've got a good one between the Buffalo Bills and the Houston Texans. With that, let's head over to the space city of Houston, standing by at NRG Stadium. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, much appreciated, Coach, as we welcome all of you to our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. They do it big here in Houston, and a second ago, it was a Texas-sized welcome for their hometown guys. They're fired up and ready to go as they get set to match up with the Buffalo Bills. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. And this is a game where the defenses, they need to be on their toes because you've got quarterbacks here, yes, that can throw the football, but they can also run it very well, too. Mobile quarterbacks. Remember, for the longest time, they used to tell the quarterbacks, stay in the pocket. We don't want you outside of it at all. Nowadays, that mobility, truly an asset, and people are game planning for it. As a scout told me recently, we are actually working with what the colleges are giving us nowadays. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line with the Buffalo Bills. Now the first carry for Devin Singletary. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Allen looking middle and it's incomplete. Robert Foster, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. My little boy, trouble man. thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. So the shotgun snap to Allen. He'll buy some time right. He may try and run for this. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. They run on first down as they're able to get this Don't forward for Don't about you. four. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Allen. And John Brown's got it complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. And this will be out of bounds, and they spotted it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. 
Charles, as the Texans get the ball back here, I want to discuss their season. It's been kind of some good, some really good, and then some bad and questionable. But under Bill O'Brien, he's in his sixth year. They've had nine or more wins five times now because they've reached that plateau this year. Is this team one, though, that can make a run in the playoffs, or is it just going to be another exit in the playoffs? Well, the problem that they run into is oftentimes they win their division, but they're the fourth division winner, which yeah. means what? They got a wild go card. Yeah. So they tend to host a wild card game, play in that. Most of the time they get beat, right? They did have that big win against Oakland a couple of years ago, but that was the year Derek Carr broke his leg, couldn't play. Then the backup gets hurt and ended up starting Connor Cook, a rookie, his first snaps in the NFL. So that was almost a layup. They've got to find a way to get out of that wild card game, and I'm not sure this is the year that they find a way to win the AFC South. I think they'll still be in the wild card game in 2019. Yeah, because Bill O'Brien's only taken them to the divisional round once, and they lost that game. An extra defensive back here for the Bills on third down. From the gun, here's Watson rolling to his right. He can run for it, and he will. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. The first down carry here for Johnson. Give him a couple on the carry there, yeah. second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll try the air now with Watson. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 43. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And now he'll tuck it and run. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. He was able to get away earlier in the drive, but apparently all the time they put in practice finally came to the front, didn't it? They remembered their lessons and found a way to contain him when he took off on that one. Full set. I got you, boy. I got you, boy. Line him, go. Line him, go. On second down, Hyde. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Back to throw, Watson. This is Johnson. He's got it. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. So when you saw him dump it off to the back, did you think he was going to pick up the first down there? <laughs> well, I knew one thing. It wasn't his primary target. At least it didn't look like it. Turned out to be the play they needed, though. And it's big because it's the opening drive. So converting that third down, keeping the play, not the play, the drive going. Yeah, it certainly appeared like his downfield targets were covered. He threw the little dump off to, the, to his back. And nice effort picking up the first down, though. And you're right. That opening drive, keep those chains moving. Bear in mind, that wasn't a big lineman back there for the tackle for loss. That was a cornerback. So are you saying the myth has been shattered? That all of them are not just cover corners? Some of them actually will stick their nose in and tackle when necessary? That's what we just saw, isn't it? And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. 
And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Watson. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And it's now 3-0, Texans. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. As Buffalo comes back out here, Charles, I just want to give some love to the job that Sean McDermott has done. And, yeah, you got to give the players credit, too, but a double-digit win season. First season of at least 10 wins this year for Buffalo since 1999. And think about McDermott now. He's been to the playoffs two or three seasons since the year 2000 with seven previous coaches before McDermott, zero playoff appearances. And this is a proud franchise, a community that loves their team. And the players carry a lot of pride with them into the future because I've seen all over social media, former Bills, so excited to see how this team is playing, coming out of the woodwork to let the world know, hey, we're all about the Buffalo Bills. You're exactly right. What Sean McDermott has done there in a short amount of time, Really, really impressive. And they're also a team that's built to scare the heck out of people in the playoffs. Excellent on defense, a quarterback who can throw it downfield and Josh Allen. And boy, when he breaks contain running it, wreaks havoc on defenses. A gain there of 21 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball in the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw, it's Allen. And that is incomplete. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. The Bills send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And the Texans set to come onto the field. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 27. Watson now to throw. And this one complete to Will Fuller. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina... DeAndre Hopkins, he's all alone. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins. 58 yards, and the Texans are able to show off their quick strike ability. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now the Bills' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there, and now it's third down at inches. 41 and Check, 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 41. Allen going to try and throw on third down. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. They'll run on first down. Singletary. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball, because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, 
and it will help him at contract time. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant it a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. The Bills send the punter out as he's on here to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot let's in the go, coffin corner. Go, and they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, got, inside the five. Team. Superb. From his goal line here, Watson. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Now a stoppage here as we've got a bill shaken up on the play. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Watson now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages... When they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Watson, and he'll find Aikens there, complete. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. To throw again on second down. Watson, man open. That's Kiki QT complete. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. Watson in the offense going to come up first and 10. And he's four for four now throwing the ball to start the drive. Here's Watson. He finds his running back, Hyde. And he's got this down to the 35. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Watson now nearly perfect. Nine of ten in this first half. It's first and ten. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 27, Watson. He finds his man, Johnson. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Being chased out left. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They turn to the fullback, Gillespie. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal.
They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. They'll run for it with Hyde. No gain on the play that time, so a big stop, and it's going to leave them with a fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what, oh, right? Yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. And I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he'd taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. The results for them so far not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet, trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? DJ Reader there on the tackle. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually wrote that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they would wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They get a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Throwing his Allen on third. And he finds Beasley complete. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. On the return, Carter. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. A throw out wide to QT, complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. And be careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone. Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Jerry Hughes on the stop. 
I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Back to the ground. This time it's high. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. I'm coming, I'm coming. Throwing on third down, Watson. He's got Fuller. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion. They would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Okay, NFL kickers nowadays, they make let's things go. look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. But it's going to be second down. CD, with that incompletion, let's talk AFC playoff picture. I think you and I agree that if you put together any sort of power rankings, we'd put Baltimore number one, certainly in the AFC. But you look ahead to the playoffs getting started on January 4th. Who do you see as their main competitor for that Lamar Hunt trophy? Well, tradition and us not wanting Wanting to be wrong dictates that we say New England next, and rightly so because of the number of Lombardi trophies they've won, how they've always played at this time of year. But the bottom line to me is the prime contenders right now for Baltimore, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes has gathered together, the defense is playing better, and Buffalo really showed me something when they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh on a Sunday night in week 15. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? Takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. First trip to the red zone for the Bills. First and 10 right at the 20. Here's Gore. And he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Now on second down, this is Gore. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of one, and they're going to have a third down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their Hi, linebacker hey. to get into the backfield and spill the play. Pick me up. Here we go. On third down, Allen. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13-3. to 
So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Let's go. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. You better be afraid of me. On second and nine, Watson. He finds Hopkins complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first down, it's Watson, and that is incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells, but it'll be second down. With that incompletion, you know, Charles, one of the big storylines in the final few weeks of the season lies in the AFC South. Tennessee and Houston battling back and forth. Houston won round one, week 15, a victory in Nashville. But which of those two teams do you think has the potential to go deeper in the playoffs? Well, Tennessee just lost at home to Houston, and now we'll have to go on the road to play them again in Week 17. So I would say, on the surface, you would think Houston. They have the quarterback as well in Deshaun Watson that scares everyone. But I'm picking Tennessee as a team that could go deeper because of their defense. That's really a top-five defense on any given Sunday. Their ability to rush the passer, their ability to play the ball in the air. I like that Tennessee team, and I think Ryan Tannehill... The switch to him at quarterback has really energized that club. Complete here. It's high. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. That play was well covered. Just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, we're not able to find any yardage on that one. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Andre Roberts is deep for Buffalo. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. So out of bounds on the punt, and the spot will be, the side judge says, right at, yeah, right at the 35-yard line here. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Second down, Allen, and the grab by Croft. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. That catch good for five. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. 
Here's Allen, and able to find John Brown. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. So how would you describe that one, partner? Workmanlike right there, getting that first down, blue-collar type football? Yeah, only needed three, got four, just enough. I like workmanlike. I think it's pretty cool myself. Everything doesn't have to be high glamour in this game. Now Allen. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Well, let's get back to the playoff picture. We talked about the AFC. Let's look at the NFC. That race starting to come into focus. We know most of the teams, Seahawks, 49ers, Saints, and Packers all in. Vikings in good shape. How do you handicap this race? It seems like anyone can beat anyone. I think you're spot on because if you were going into the playoffs with these teams that we're going to talk about, who would you make the absolute favorite? It could be anyone, right? It could be Seattle. It could be San Francisco. It could be New Orleans. I know Minnesota's probably going to come in as a wild card. Green Bay will come in as a division champ, it looks like. But bottom line is, Dallas or Philadelphia has got to win the NFC East. And I don't know that anyone wants to go to their home field and play when they have to play in a divisional game. So when it comes, to, when you get it. Allen hit. He lost the football. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. The Bills send the punter out as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. Come on. They start the drive with Hyde. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Yeah! Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, what's the plan of attack here? Very late second quarter, and look where the ball is. Yeah, bad spot for you. But the defense has all three timeouts. So what you're telling your team is ball security number one. It's not all on the running backs if you decide to run the football. That offensive line has got to protect them and wedge out some space because you can't just kneel. They take three timeouts. They're going to get the ball back in good field position with a chance to put points on the board. You've got to try and get a first down and run out this first half. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The final shot before the break. Watson steps away. He may try and run for this. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Come on, fellas. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They built a good first-half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. The tackle is made by Micah Hyde. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. They run, hide, looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. 
Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Set, JT! Off of play action, it's Watson. Finding fouls complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Star Latulale in on the tackle. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Mike, 58, right there. All day, baby, all day. From the gun on third, Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Hey, 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 hey. Watson, off play action. They'll roll him out right. He's going to take off with it. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Mike, 49. Let's go, defense. Let's get out the field, defense. Faking the give. Now Watson. And all this is taken in one-handed. What a catch. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 19. It's got to the point where we see guys like that make that type of a catch. Not fair goes through my brain. That size, that speed, and now they're acting like wide receivers, too. Yeah, yeah tight end one-handed catches. They're kind of like wide receiver one-handed catches nowadays. Just not right. That's complete right around the eight. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a pickup of 12. Second play in a row with a 12-yard gain. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, he usually gets it done. Now Watson. And he's got it. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown from eight yards out, and the Texans push further out in front. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind, because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. 
And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. On first down, Allen. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Allen now looks to throw. Got an open man. It's Foster. And he slips up past ready, the 45 before being tackled. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move you. on first down. Allen going to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Patrick DeMarco, the fullback, the one he was looking for. And it's second down. Well, Charles, while we have a second, you know, we talked about the NFC playoff picture, but I wanted to get your thoughts on a hot topic right now in NFL circles. That's awarding a home game to every division winner, regardless of record. It's happened twice in this decade that we've seen a 7-9 and nine team in Seattle get a home game and a 7-8-1 and one Carolina team get one. Where do you stand on this? Because there's a scenario where you could have a 13. Allen hit. He lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. Here's a throw. Complete right side to start things out. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now a run with high. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. On first down, Johnson. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now it's Watson. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They have certainly looked his way in this third quarter. Another catch, and it's good for a first down. This is it. 18. 58, right there. Rip left, rip left. Adam, let's go. Adam, go. They'll try and run. This is Johnson. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Deshaun Watson keeping it himself from eight yards out. And the Texans push further out in front. Defensively by now, you know his ability. You know he has it in him to take off and run. Yeah, because they knew coming into this game, but we've already seen examples in this contest that he can run the football. I think they're going to examine different ways to rush him now. Is it, Are they going to do it with different lanes? Are they going to use a spy? But they have to come up with options because right now, he's hurting them.
So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Let's go, let's go, and here go. come the Bills. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And give him six yards here as he's stopped near the 35 at the 34. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Kidd had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, Pull even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed know, there quickly at the end. Let him know, let him know. On second down and four, Allen is going to find his running back. It's complete, and he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Open man here is Foster. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Mike. From their own 40 to the other 40. The gain of 20 leads to first and 10. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team that's playing excellent defense, great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone, and especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. Now Allen, and that's caught by Beasley. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 23. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of six there on first. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. And this one caught by Beasley. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. 
Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Again, it'll be Singletary. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit, a great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. Throwing now is Allen. Sliding it. And he will score. Touchdown, Buffalo. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Bills get a bit closer. That's a tough one there defensively because look at the stops they got on first and second down. And it's first and second and goal. And then on third down, they cover the receivers. But they leave an alley open for him to find. And he does. That is frustrating. You do almost everything right and he still ends up in the end zone. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. And here comes the Texans now. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get... And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. That sack by Tremaine Edmonds. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. So following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Now high. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Throwing on third down, Watson. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Back now in Houston. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. Watson on first down. He'll buy some time right. He'll run it. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Looked to me like the adopter of my kindergarten teacher always said, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Despite the lead here in the fourth, they're still taking shots. Not content to sit on this lead at all. And to me, it raises the question of what's right in this game nowadays? Do you sit on the ball and run it because you have enough of a lead? Or do you try and extend it because you always feel like the other team can come back? Extend it. Have some fun. 
Here's Watson. He finds his target, Fuller. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills' 36. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 36. And now he's going to use his legs. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. One well, of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And he didn't get it there. No, it's no good. Go, Just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. Now, this one now not over yet, Charles. You've got a sliver of hope on that other sideline. You certainly do, because that would have made it a three-score game. And that probably would have been curtains at that point. But now if they can get down the field quickly and somehow get the ball back one more time, we may have a different ball game. Throwing on first down is Allen. Rolling to his right. He's going to take off with it. A good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Yeah, let's get a sack lunch. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen, and he's going to have the connection to Foster. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Allen. They'll roll him out right. Now he'll pull it down. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. To throw again on second down. Allen, now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 26. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Allen now on first down. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. To the air, Allen, and the grab by Croft. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. 
That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Allen going to come to the line here, first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Here's Allen to throw it. He finds his target, John Brown. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Bills touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to pull a bit closer. Second effort there. He was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. From the gun, it's Allen. And they're going to get the two. It's caught. So they get the conversion, and now we're back to a one-score game. Houshka now to send this one away following the score. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here we go. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. This game has really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side, and now... Yeah, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead, they go into coast mode, and all of a sudden they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here, otherwise they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Opted to run for it, the decision a good one, picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this with both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Lorenzo Alexander brings him down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now, here's a throw right side, taken in by his tight end. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills' 39. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 39-yard line. Oh, no, he lost the football. Will Fuller was the intended target. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. 
That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Another tote for the afternoon workhorse. It's high. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Open man, the tight end fouls. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will bump the lead up to 11. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game. His third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And the Bills getting set to go. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Here's Allen on first and 10. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups, and they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now Allen to throw. Going to throw again. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Now Allen got an open man. It's Foster. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Your trip is here. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. From midfield, here's Allen finding Knox there, complete. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they're going to face a third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. And I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 
And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 23. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. After that throw, and it was definitely one that he would love to have back. I wonder what's going through his head. I wonder what kind of mind game he's playing with himself to get himself back on track. Because a lot of guys, that's what they do. They have little triggers that when the mechanics are off or if they make a bad throw, that they go to that place to get themselves back in sync. Open man, here's Foster. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. They run. It's Gore. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. It's a gain of a yard, and it takes us to the two-minute warning. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Allen going to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Tell you what, Brandon, if I see a dime look, if I see six defensive backs near the goal line, I'm changing to a running play every time. And they had six there. Surprised he didn't audible at the line? Very much so. I'm going to count on my offensive line in this situation against the lighter defensive back and try and push it across the end zone that way. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Allen now looks to throw. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Pauschka's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeout position, with all three timeouts, I kick it deep and try and pin them back there. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Check, 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 check. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Forty 
He finds Hopkins complete. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Josh Allen in the offense now. Down by 8, less than 90 seconds to go. They'll have to go 90-plus yards, and a field goal does them no good as they've got it with a first down. 49 80. to throw it's Knox the tight end making the catch and he's able to get this one up to the 8 yard line this time just a yard on the catch there it'll be second and 9 sometimes it's hard to figure but you can live with incompletions in this situation you can't live with these short gains that take time off the clock you know who loves it this defense counting down toward a minute to go in this football game they'll look to throw got a man it's Brown and he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, they had held him pretty well in check, but if you recall back in the first quarter, you said they needed to avoid the big play. He finally gets loose. And the thing about it, it doesn't have to be a bunch of big plays. Sometimes one big play can be enough. That's why it's tough to deal with a guy like that. He's back to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. He's going to let it fly, and this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Allen will look to throw for it on fourth. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Down to Anigos Watson, and that should just about do it for this ball game. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in.
So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.